When planning a trip to France, Marseille is hardly among the first destinations that you would consider adding to your itinerary, unlike Paris, the French Riviera or the Loire Valley. This could be because, as a port city, Marseille might come off as a sketchy place to visit. However, with its rich history, distinct culture and photogenic looks, Marseille is well worth your time, either as a standalone city break or as part of that Provence road trip you've always dreamt of. As for the sketchy part, if you practice your common sense and stick to the tourist areas, avoiding the city's infamous northern districts, you'll be just fine. In this video, we will show you what to do in Marseille if you decide to spend a couple of days in this sunny city in southern France. The capital of the Provence region, Marseille is the second largest city in France by population. It's also the oldest city in France and one of the oldest continuously inhabited settlements in Europe. Marseille was founded by the ancient Greeks around 600 BC. They named their new city Massalia, and this is the name Greeks still use to refer to Marseille. Since ancient times, Marseille has been a major trading hub, and it remains the main commercial port of France and one of the most important ports in the Mediterranean Sea. As such, Marseille is a melting pot of cultures like no other, graced with a multicultural ambience that's hard to beat. Marseille's port defined the city's character throughout the centuries. This is why your journey to explore the charms of Marseille should start at its picture-perfect old port. From the traditional wooden fishing boats that float lazily on the water, to the shiny yachts that flock the marina, to the hip-hop dancers that show off their indisputable talent under the impressive mirror roof of the Ombrière de Norman Foster, the old port of Marseille has no shortage of fantastic photo opportunities. A stone's throw from the old port, Marseille's old city awaits. Le Pagnet is the oldest district in Marseille, the very location where it all started for this vibrant seaside city so many centuries ago. However, Le Pagnet feels more like a charming village than the very heart of the second largest city in France. A stroll around its narrow alleys and hidden squares is enough to see why. Walking around Le Pagnet is full of surprises. Vivid graffiti on the walls, quaint cafes and local galleries or shops appear at every turn. It is also here that you can try Marseille's signature cookies, the famous navette, or buy the world-renowned Marseille soap. Yet, Le Pagnet is not without some amazing sightseeing stops either. Dominating this picturesque neighborhood, La Vieille Charité, was constructed between 1671 and 1749 to provide a home to the city's poor and less fortunate. Nowadays, the former charity home houses several museums, temporary exhibitions and a gorgeous café that feels like an oasis when temperatures are soaring, which isn't uncommon in Marseille. The imposing Cathedral of Marseille is also situated in Le Pagnet, Another essential stop in the neighborhood of Le Pognet is Place de Moulin, or Windmill Square. As you wander around the beautiful square, it's hard to believe that there used to be about 15 windmills here in the past. Nowadays you can spot the remains of a couple of them, but it's not an easy task, as they have been incorporated into the building surrounding the square. Le Pognet is also home to what must be the most important museum in Marseille, the Museum of European and Mediterranean Civilizations explores the common history, culture and ultimately fate of the people that call the Mediterranean Basin home. The museum is connected to the imposing Fort Saint-Jean by a footbridge. Apart from the chance for a delightful walk, the complex of the museum and the fort also offer breathtaking views from various points. A short bus ride from the old port or the old city one of the most emblematic buildings in Marseille awaits. The Basilica of Notre Dame de la Garde is often regarded as the ultimate symbol of Marseille. Its construction began in 1853 and lasted for more than 40 years. Built upon a rocky hill, La Bonne Mer, as locals affectionately call the church, 
overlooks the city of Marseille and offers jaw-dropping vistas for as far as the eye can see. No trip to Marseille is complete without a visit to the dramatic Chateau d'If. Built on the smallest of the four islands that comprise the Friul archipelago, just four kilometers or two miles off the coast of Marseille, this 16th-century fortress served as a prison due to its isolated location. Chateau d'If acquired international fame in the 19th century when Alexandre Dumas used it as a setting for his novel The Count of Monte Cristo. Nowadays, Chateau d'If is one of the best places to visit in Marseille as it has something to offer to everyone – history, stunning views and even fun games. It's also very easy to get to by ferry from Marseille, although you may have to brace for long queues at the ticket booths. Also, keep in mind that the short and pleasant ferry ride is weather-dependent, which means that if it's windy during your trip to Marseille, you won't be able to visit the magnificent chateau. Now that you are no longer wondering what to do in Marseille, we are pretty sure you are considering adding this charming but often underrated city to your France itinerary. With its rich history, warm climate and colorful vibes, Marseille is the ideal place to sit back, relax and soak up the Mediterranean sun for a couple of days. If you enjoyed our video about what to do in Marseille, please like, comment and share it. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.